Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good, good. How are you, man? Doing wonderfully. Want me to turn on video? Yeah, yeah. It's going to do go. this weird. Oh, there, there, there you go. Hey. Hey. Welcome to the show, man. Much yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was just telling the audience, like, you know, lefty host drama. It's kind of an interesting time to, to kind of come in with, you know, lefty hosts fighting each other uh, over things that are they're fairly small differences. You know, things like tactical disagreements or, uh, you know, procedural disagreements mm -hmm. and how the, the like the focus, I think the left kind of eats itself and fights itself. And that's not that's not saying like um, that we shouldn't be calling out the grifty left. We absolutely should be. Right. But like I, I think there's a I think there's a big disconnect between a lot of lefty hosts and there's this penchant to kind of circular firing squad, which does empower, you know, the fash. Mm hmm. Um, so, okay, we're just jumping right into the topic. Yeah, okay. So my oh, oh. issue... <laughs> Go uh, ahead, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my issue here um, is not necessarily tactical disagreements. Uh, I do think the circular firing squad is a problem. I think that I participate and have been subjected to it to varying extents. My issue is I feel like the way in which some online leftists, content creators, whatever, hosts engage in the production of their content leads lefties down a very, very bad and ineffective road politically. So sure. take, for example, force the vote, okay? Now, I think that if you actually spend five minutes to think about it, the force the vote issue is is uh, rather silly. If you actually think like, okay, so what happens if they can't get the votes for Pelosi? Well, they're never gonna be able to get the votes for anybody else. So we mm -hmm. vote again, and then we vote again, and again, and again, and again, mm -hmm. again. And eventually Pelosi will come through because at this point the Justice Dems are holding up the process and incurring a lot of political mm -hmm. ire. So whatever, bad idea, fine. But then there are people in the Force the Vote crew who are screaming and screaming about how this this is them trying to get people health care, and this is, if you disagree, then you're in the way, and they're holding AOC to account. This was the promise that she made when she uh, uh, was elected. And it's like, man, you never cared about the process here. This was always just mm -hmm. an attempt at getting eyes on you as you distinguish yourself from, like, the, the progressive left. Yeah, and, and look, the, you know, we, we know that the whole force of vote thing was pushed by the, the movement for the People's Party in order to try to take, you know, Democrats from the Democratic Party and herd them over to the movement for a People's Party. Like, we know that. We're, like, we've seen their seats. And so that's really what the movement's been about. But you're right to call out and to, and to talk about some of the lefty hosts who, are, who might be doing it disingenuously. Uh, and, and I don't know if I, I don't know. You know, if all of them are, I, I'm, I'm certainly some of them, some of them are, and some of them might just not be, you know, knowing what they're talking about. Yeah, it's, well, you can never really, or you can't always know if a person is actually grifting. Um, I generally yes. find the accusations of grifting, and I, this is my fault as well, tend to be pretty unproductive um, because mm -hmm. you're not actually arguing about the issues at hand. You're arguing about the extent to which people actually believe in them. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if people are grifting. Grifting isn't necessarily my issue, but the optics of grifting might be. So when you have people who are like building a platform that is that is based around their belief that everyone else is doing everything else wrong and they're all bad, but you should watch me and you should listen to me and you should uh, diverge yourself from the rest of the left and give me money and participate in my events and. It feels mm -hmm. like it's it's a it's a project of building personality cults at that point. And mm -hmm. we're not talking about coordination. We're not talking about working together on any of these issues. And at that point, it feels like they're just pulling people away from the actual left. And it, then it's no mm -hmm. longer a circular firing squad. Right. And, and, and there is that issue with and I, I found this personally where you have since th look, this is a this is a very competitive like media space, right? And so what we don't do that the right wing does is the right wing, of course, all kind of consolidates in a block and promotes each other and lists each other up and you know uh, does a lot of cross pollination. Wouldn't it be cool or, if or we cross did that? pollination? Sorry. Wouldn't it be cool What's if that? we did that? I it would be fantastic. Which is what one of the you know things that I've been trying to do over the past few years is to do more of that which is why I reach out to people. And yeah, sometimes it ends up being a little bit of a circle jerk when we have these conversations, but I think it's important that we, you know, boost each other up. And so that gives us a bonus of fighting against fascists, of course, we're all a block. Uh, and then also 
gives us a big uh, uh, advantage over the, the the grifters as well. And and I don't know why, but um, it, it it's like it looks like you're having a a, a seizure. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> that's the, Skype. It did this video. before when I was on the Drunken Peasants. I don't know why Skype okay. dislikes my camera so much, but I updated the the, the program. I know. So I, I don't know why. I, I'm I am sorry about the choice of using Skype. Um, you know, if uh, it, like if if Discord would actually be able to do sounds, uh, which by the way, I I I I do need to set that up. This wasn't even one of the segments that I was looking to talk about. Um, is this something that I was doing? You know, to kind of uh, talk about things uh, before you came on. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to do some segments about um, you know uh, Donald Trump Jr. for example. So so it is interesting. You're you're live on your audience, right? Yes. Okay, so hi, Bosch's audience. Uh, Y'all are pretty cool, or at least well, most. In, of you. <laughs> wait, introduce yourself properly. By the way, you got right into it. You didn't even didn't even. Take I know. That I, I I dive I dive right in. This is this is my bread and butter. Uh, I can't help it. Uh, I'm Jeff Alder. I do a show. I'm part of the uh, Young Turks Network. So I'm one of the independent contractors. So I'm the small guy that nobody's ever heard of. Um, Hence, you know, the need for a little bit of promotion. <laughs> and, you know, I look, I, I, I have spent like the last four years dunking on Donald Trump and and Republicans, and of course, uh, corporate Democrats as well. So, you know, I, I like to focus on the big problem of fighting fascism and fighting the right, but also, of course, uh, trying to fairly take on you know the great corporate Democrats and, you know, how they also tend to be a, a, a an impediment to more broad progressive change, a small progressive change they seem to be okay with uh, here and there, you know, incrementalism. Uh, but I think we're at a point where we need a little bit more than just incrementalism when it comes to things like climate change, healthcare, et cetera, things like that. So I do try to challenge them uh, on, on that as fairly as I can. And of course we can't get any, everything right, you know, uh, as, as you were mentioning, I was watching your streamer earlier and and you know you did point out how like you you have a hard time trusting stuff that's said by the online left, and I can definitely understand that. That tweet that you were talking about earlier with Ted Cruz, which was an obvious fake, a lot of libs, a lot of leftists. I mean, we kind of kind of fell into that, and uh, and and we got to be more careful to vet our sources. And I've made my own mistakes as well mm -hmm. on that, and I think we all have in this in this space. Uh, well, yeah, I would definitely say so. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe more so yourself though. No, you've been doing this longer than I have. <laughs> I, I have. I've been doing this since 2015. So I actually uh, was doing panels as early as 2013. Uh, which, by the way, I I I have run a uh, I've done regular uh, panels arguing against somebody that you may have run into a couple of times. Uh, actual justice warrior. Oh yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, we're we're good Still friends, here. you know. <laughs> How'd that actually, work there out? is a picture. Uh, there is a picture of he and I actually floating around. Uh, I went to a, uh, I went to a uh, um, this mines thing, IRL whatever, in in New Jersey to do panels, debate panels, because they were they were hurting for lefties. Okay, and so they flew me out there, um, and and I did a you know debate panel, and I forget I forget who I was uh, who I was debating against. Uh, but it was fun, actually. It was fun doing those debates. I've been invited uh, to those you know, minds thing a couple of times, but because of the uh, pandemic, I haven't had the pleasure. Oh yeah, no, they're 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 fun. You know, you're you're like you're debate bro, and so, you know, I, I I'm sorry. I hope that doesn't like. It's, it's not like well, pejorative. it's it's not a slur. You can use it. You can use it with the hard D. You know. <laughs> but you know, hey. Um, I figured that uh, that'd be something that you might be interested in doing. So they are fun, and I definitely recommend it. Uh, mainly because, I mean, there's a, there's a there's a lot of targets of opportunity. I think the last one uh, I was at was a uh, Lauren Chen was there. So that's that's then they were talking about immigration. Yeah, I'll take any opportunity to uh, meet these people in an alleyway after the pandemic is done. Obviously, <laughs> I got got to be you know responsible to the fine people I live in. I think I think Destiny went recently to one of these and he debated Milo Yiannopoulos. But in that case, it Ooh. felt it felt almost like resurrecting a corpse. So um, yeah, yeah. So you know, depending got, on relevance, he, he got banned from Parlor again. Yeah, because he was. Uh, he was uh, threatening to give out like Ben Shapiro's cell phone number or something like that. What free speech? 
Whatever happened to free speech? Honestly, you know? You'd think you'd get that from Parler, if nothing else, but apparently Seriously. not. Seriously. No, no, no free speech on, par uh, free speech on Parler. All right, so so the things I actually wanted to talk about, and, and I'm sorry for the like the retread, uh, but I wanted to talk about, you know, Flying Cruise. Yeah. Uh, you know, Don Jr., I've got a couple of videos to show you on that. Uh, maybe a little bit of GOP cancel culture. Uh, you got Republicans canceling each other, which is hilarious. Um, there's a, a trans story. We've got, you know, hate groups that are behind a, a rash of new anti-trans bills. I want to talk about that. Uh, and then uh, maybe uh, PS5 scalpers. They feel like they're being treated unfairly, Bosch. Okay. Well, I, bring, bring me in. We'll see what we can get through. <laughs> All right. So, again, it's going to be a little weird because I try to cut these up into to clips and segments and stuff. So I like to do a little bit of an introduction. If you don't mind me kind of taking over your show for the next hour. No, go for it. Feel free to lead. Right. I'm a, I'm a switch. All right, cool. Cool. Get you over here on the little screen here. The dumb off contest continues between members of the Trump clan, uh, with Don Jr. making this latest entry. They're trying to, you know, cancel him. He took a family vacation. Now, obviously, we understand sometimes you know, the optics of that right now isn't ideal. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, he's a senator. He doesn't manage crises in states. That's a governor's job. He's a federal employee. They mostly vote on things. So, you know, I'm not going to jump on this bandwagon of trying to cancel the guy uh, for taking his kids on a vacation. It's totally ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. They should focus on the things that matter. They should focus on people in power who could actually affect change in a crisis, not people who work and legislate from D.C. Doesn't make sense. It's a double standard we'll all ha always have to live up to. But let's be real. I'm happy to call out someone, even the people on our side, if they screw up. But honestly, in my opinion, this is not one of those times. All right. So before I before I get you in here, uh, in a tweet, he also said the hypocrisy of those trying to cancel Ted Cruz, who have been totally silent on their Democrat governor's incompetence, is telling my thoughts on the Cancun Cruz faux outrage is fake. Can cancel gate is fake. Those those wily Democrats, how dare they mess up so badly with their incompetence? So, so this got a lot of outrage on Twitter, right? So, you know, um, I, I'm not people... really appreciating this until having not seen the video along with the voice, but he really does sound like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> not True. quite as much as, as uh, Peterson, but he's in the ballpark, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's it's bad. And he, the guy's probably coked up. Um, but look, uh, you know, a lot of people were like, you realize that Greg Abbott is the, the governor of Texas. So now you could take this a couple of ways, right? So you could take it like the newest approaches. He didn't necessarily say that it was Texas's governor uh, that messed up. Uh, but, you know, he didn't also not say it. So we're going to dunk on him, and, uh, dunk on him anyway. Well, I, I mean, I feel like the Republican Party, especially lately, has been treating their governors kind of disposable. Trump's kind of set mm -hmm. that precedent, I think, especially with the way he treated the governor of Georgia, where, um, where like they they know that at like a state level, they don't need to cooperate that much because the governor has absolutely no choice but to go along with whatever abuse they receive. If they don't suck up to it, then somebody else will take their place. But it doesn't actually seem to affect the political alignment of the people who voted in that Republican governor. So you can shit talk the governor all you want, as long as you keep eyes away from Ted Cruz, because he narrowly, narrowly won his 2018 Senate seat. And he actually is something they care about protecting. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so they can keep as many people uh, as they can in, in, in the Senate. Um, so now there are some major, major problems going on in Texas, though, that you can absolutely blame the governor for. Uh, for example, Texas has a, and, and as well as the Texas legislature, uh, they have a partly deregulated or mostly deregulated electricity market. Okay, they chose not to provide power companies, this is according to the New York Times, with incentives to install reserve capacity to deal with possible emergencies. This made the power cheaper in normal times, which hey, it's great, uh, cheaper power. Who doesn't like that, right? But also left the system vulnerable to these wild swings when you have emergencies. Uh, so you know, I feel like. Having more federal regulations, uh, the federal reg uh, you know regulations that they 
made their own power grid to get away from would have actually stopped some of these insane price spikes. Um, you, you've seen the story about Gritty, right? Well, I've seen, yeah, well, I've heard about, like, um, mm -hmm. electricity being charged, like, $1,000 per kilowatt hour or something like that. Like, some oh, absurdly worse. high price. It's worse. Before the before the storm, it was about 20 kilowatts per, uh, per hour. It it went over $9,000. It's over $9,000. Um, at least that'll delight some of the weeps in the state. I mean, we've got, they've got that going for them. But yeah, well, this yes. is what happens when you deregulate, you know? Um, one of the, the problem is that riding high 10 years and then having one crash can be all it takes to end a person's life. Even if it incurs some higher costs in the long run, there's a benefit to stability. Mm -hmm. It's basically like the civic infrastructure equivalent of having health insurance, you know? You pay out your premium, sure, but if you ever need to go to the hospital, it's not going to bankrupt you ideally right right and it's not going to leave millions of people without heat uh water uh, and and the ability to of course cook food which you know is also you kind of need food to survive i, I hear you know so it's, it's good to have it's good to have so now the after all this happened of course you've also probably seen the reports of numerous right-wing individuals blaming this entire thing on alternative energy on, on wind power, right? On wind turbines. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but it, it's important to point out that Texas's energy mix is, is 90% traditional thermal energy sources. You got oil and natural gas. Uh, and so it's only about 7% wind power, 3% uh, mix of solar, geothermal and other energy sources. Uh, and so, I mean, it, it's it's pretty clear that there was a big failure in the traditional energy sources as well. Yes, there were wind turbines that froze over and seized up and wouldn't work and wouldn't generate. Uh, but they also had problems with gas plants. Well, it, it all it all froze over because whether it it's a wind over. turbine or a natural gas plant, these institutions need to be appropriately weatherproofed, and they didn't. I think back in 2011, in fact, they explicitly rejected. A, um, the the opportunity to weatherize these stations in a way that could accommodate potential changes uh, resulting from climate change. Right. And they chose not to do it in order to keep things cheap for them, cheap for the companies and cheap for the consumers as well, uh, because they have an incredibly competitive energy market in Texas. Um, but all of that Facts be damned, right? Fox News. So personalities and guests on Fox News and Fox Business blamed the Green New Deal, green energy, uh, and, and, and all that stuff um, over 128 times since Monday. 128 times, dude. Yeah, uh, mostly the an Green opinion New Deal shows. was in effect. That's crazy. I wish I know, we right? lived in the world that conservatives thought we lived in. That would be... That would be unbelievable. Anytime anything bad happens, it's because of the failures of socialism. Well, cry I would love mm -hmm. to be living with the failures of socialism. Please, God, subject me <laughs> to those failures. I would love to see, uh, you know, how far we can go. But, of, of course, no. It's it's the same genre as when they... Um, remember back during the uh, BLM protests and they would, there'd be like yeah. a burned building or some rubble? They'd take a picture of this and they'd say, this is Biden's America while Trump was president? That's the vibe I get. It's true. It's true. And so, you know, they do all this, they, they do all this blame. And it turns out that, no, uh, you actually had straight news shows on Fox News, so-called straight news shows, blaming the left 48 times versus the opinion shows, which, of course, are handy, Ingram, all that, 80 times. <laughs> it'll work. Well, it'll work. We laugh. OK, it'll, you can laugh well, if you want. It's but true. It'll work. That's the thing. It doesn't matter. They can say whatever the hell they want. It, it does not matter. We can mock it as much as we want. We can deconstruct these arguments as much as we want. But their bald facedness is the point. If they were trying to, like, nuance their way out of an argument like, uh, uh, actually, there was a Texan Democrat governor in 1967 and he was the one who did X. Like, if they were trying to go that direction, then it would be pretty easy to knock them down. But if they just come out and say, yeah, uh, it was socialism and the Green New Deal and all the wind froze, the wind stopped blowing and it is the green new deal and if they just go with that that's it it's fine they win yeah look there are reports of like people that believe that putting up solar panels would suck the energy out of the sun 
I mean, this is this is okay. Okay, so I, I see this from Lib Twitter all the time. Okay, not only was it super like classless for a lot of Lib Twitter uh, Twitter to go after like people that are freezing in Texas is like some sort of gotcha, like ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, te- uh, take that Texas. What do the people in Texas do? Yes, of course, they voted for shitty politicians that abandoned them uh, at the first chance of trouble, like, of course, Ted Cruz, who flew to Cancun uh, while everybody's freezing. But, like, you know, th- this is this is not a good thing to do, to sit there and laugh at them. What we need is, you know, empathy. What we need is to actually take care of people. Yes, even if they vote against, like, socialism, they believe all these crazy things, you shouldn't abandon them. We're supposed to be part of the... United States, you know, we're not yeah, supposed to leave anybody hanging. It's dumb for like a million reasons. First of all, the yes. people disproportionately affected by this are the poor. Poor people are disproportionately yes. Democrats, also disproportionately POC, who are also also disproportionately Democrats. Additionally, Republicans tend to be the greatest victims of Republican policies, okay? All the people mm-hmm. who live in fucking Appalachia or, or, or mm-hmm. Appalachia, or, you know, poor rural communities whose small towns are dying because of very obviously bad economic decisions being made by the Republicans mm-hmm. they vote in. They're the ones who are the victims of this first and foremost. Well, we're all, we all are, but them too. If you actually want, I will never learn how to pronounce Appalachian properly, I, ever. Chat, you can correct me as much as you want. I refuse to learn, I'll <laughs> never do it. Anyway, um, all that aside, I mean, even if you leave aside the empathy angle, the fact remains that if you're a Republican in Texas and you're freezing to death, um, and all you see on Twitter is liberals mocking you for your stupidity because Texan Republicans weren't voting for Republicans because of the fucking energy grid. I'd be willing to bet most Texans don't even know or didn't even know that they mm-hmm. were on a separate grid because that decision was made nearly a century ago. They, this probably is not a day to day thing that they talk about or vote based on. So they're being mocked for a decision they had no hand in based on policies mm-hmm. they didn't know existed. Where are they going to go after this? You think you're going to make them libs by mocking them this way? No, they're going to double down. They're going to say, fuck it. I was nearly dead last year. And these mm-hmm. fucking liberals on Twitter were just making fun of me for it. It's, it's just terrible. It's bad optics. It's bad politics. It's bad morally. It's everything. It's just bad. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with any of that. That's absolutely correct. It's bad. Yeah, Republican right, voters let's... vote based on guns, abortion, and immigration. Okay, they're not voting. Based... That's true. They're not voting based on Texan power grid independence. Also, transgender bathrooms. And transgender yeah, they also bathrooms. vote on that too. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, let, let's go on to, to the next one. It's pretty related. Uh, we're gonna go to Ben Shapiro. Fun times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hit. Senator Ted Cruz was recently busted going on vacation to Cancun while millions millions of residents in the state struggled without power, heat, and even food as a result, of course, a devastating winter storm and a deregulated power grid that wasn't even prepared for it. So now uh, pictures of a uh, flying Ted, that's what I like to call him, uh, blew up over social media, caused him to end his trip early, and uh, he also threw his kids under the bus, which is an interesting Interesting thing to do, but then again, for somebody who has actually thrown his wife under the bus as well, uh, and Trump and his father under the bus too to kiss Donald Trump's boots, I'm not exactly surprised. Uh, But the backlash that Cruz received was picked up by conservatives as an example of cancel culture. Yes, good old cancel culture. And so now Ben Shapiro, he's going to he's going to react to this. He's going to talk about this on his show. Let's take a look. But let's be real about this for just one second. This is one of the stupidest aspects of our politics. Like, what exactly? It's not a real-time crisis that Ted Cruz, the senator from Texas, can do anything about. Because the senator from Texas is, in fact, in the United States Senate. He's a federal officer, right? He's a federal elected official. This is up to the mayor of Houston and, like, the governor of Texas and all the people who are state-level officials. And also, I I just wonder, what is Ted Cruz, like, did they expect Ted to go there with, like, a blowtorch and start defrosting all of the pipelines? He can do what Beto O'Rourke does, and he can tweet out a bunch of links to people who are helping out. I'm sure Ted's already done that. But the, the, the notion that the gravest of all sins is that you took your family to a place that is not Texas in the middle of a bad situation in Texas. My favorite part of this is all the journalists in their heated apartments in New York who are tweeting angrily about all of this. I can't believe Ted Cruz would do something like this. Oh, yeah. I see you there on the ground handing out food. Really, well, well done there. Really, really well done. Very all high right, IQ so- arguments. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so, look, before I hand it off to you, 
Uh, for me, I think that the anger against Cruz, uh, and, I, and I think that's justified anger, right, is that uh, he was able to leave Texas. He had the means to do it, right? So he had the means to take his family someplace warm, okay, when they lost power, while many Texans did not have the ability to do so. And uh, they were, were, you know, a lot of people ended up having to try to stay warm by using their cars, which, of course, can be dangerous. Uh, in fact, in one night, Houston actually reported about 300 different cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, several of which ended up being fatal. And so, yeah, I mean, this is this is the level of desperation that has been happening in Texas. And so with Cruz fleeing the state, essentially, to go to someplace warm, it, it sends a pretty bad message. Like when the going gets tough, Ted Cruz and the rest of the affluent, you know, Texans or affluent Americans, they leave. Hey, you're on your own, sir. Well, for me, I, the the real harm here, I think, well, I don't necessarily know if it's harm. This is really just a politics game. Um, would Ted Cruz have been on the ground, like, feeding soup to the homeless if he hadn't gone to Cancun? Probably not. I think the real reason why this is important is because it demonstrates the utter fucking contempt that Ted Cruz has for his population. No sane person, no public servant with their head screwed on properly could possibly think under any circumstances that an unprecedented crisis in their state, which has led to multiple people dying, is an appropriate time to take in a vacation out of the country. No, but that's, that's mm -hmm. unfathomable to me. That's like unbelievable. Like, I, I don't even know, I, I'm trying to find like an apt comparison. It's honestly like a joke, like it's an Onion article. So it's not so much that he's hurting people by going down to Mexico. I don't really think that's the argument. It's that he doesn't even care enough about sending a message to the people of Texas by staying in solidarity that he right. even considered that prospect. It's it's just it's contempt or at the very least, it's negligence. Yeah. And, and let me just kind of add on to that point here. Uh, speaking of like staying in solidarity, remember uh, Rick Perry had come out uh, and here's what he said. Uh, he said Texans would be better uh, – I'm sorry, would be without electricity for longer than three days to keep the federal government out of their business. Try not to let whatever the crisis of the day is to take your eye off having a resilient grid – they keep using that word, resilient uh, – that keeps America safe personally, economically, and strategically. So saying basically you should you should be happy to you know stay in, that, in those cold, dangerous uh, conditions to fight socialism. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. The, like uh, the 2008 financial crisis, you know, you can see it mm -hmm. on Fox News, people coming out. The American people are proud of a robust and unregulated Wall Street. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the, the fine people of this country would never deign to regulate. They, they believe that catastrophic economic collapses are a worthwhile price to pay if it means that our like that's the gist we're getting right now like this doesn't mean shit to mm -hmm. anyone even the most ardent conservatives in texas i doubt if i press them they give a fuck about energy independence for texas i sincerely doubt they care this is um just i mean it's it's kind of gaslighting is what it is right mm -hmm. it's just trying to convince people that they shouldn't care about their state abandoning them, their government not appropriately regulating industry, about people being left to freeze and die, that they shouldn't care about that, that this is a necessary price to pay for freedom. They did the same bullshit in Iraq and Afghanistan as well. You know, you don't like the war? Well, tough. This isn't actually a war. This is a, a conceptual battle for the very concept of American freedom. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just I love the use of the word gaslighting right here, especially when we're talking about the you know effects of natural gas failing feels it feels kind of a propos really yeah i'd say so well i mean he yeah. he literally described the grid as robust it is clearly not mm -hmm. robust that is clearly not the right word to use for it and and you know another thing that bothers me energy independence like there there is no such thing as energy independence really at least not on the you know when it comes to the oil gas market you know what I'm saying? It gets all traded internationally. And so Texas, uh, I mean, oil that comes out of Texas, oil that comes out of Canada, all gets traded on the world market anyway. There is no such thing as energy independence. Right. It's regulatory I mean, unless, independence, if anything. But I don't know, like, how much that's mm -hmm. worth. Well, it's not worth anything. I mean, uh, ask the Texans who are freezing right now how much it's worth. I think all they care about is, you know, 
staying warm and, and getting clean water, which, by the way, there are water boil advisories going on right now. Well, how are you going to boil your water if you don't have any energy? Um, you know that thing they did in Karate Kid where you rub your hands together real fast oh, till the palms get warm? right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Yeah. Touch the bottom of the pot. Do that. Touch the bottom of the pot. Eventually. Slowly but surely. You could also induce a vacuum, uh, after all, um, <laughs> because water wants to boil at any temperature. It's just the pressure of the atmosphere that keeps it uh, in a liquid state. So if you could create a vacuum, then that would also... Um, science, friends. Yeah. That's what it's about. Then you have to get science, the water science, back. Science, bitch. That's the hard part. <laughs> right. Uh, you can... And, and at the end of that, wax on, wax off, right? For, for making that Karate Kid reference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, isn't that wasn't that the heated technique, right? I remember the end of Karate Kid. He did the hand spinny thing, and then he wax on, then he like melted through the other guy with his boiling heat hands. Yes, uh, yeah. and and that that is how we are going to single handedly save Texas with the boiling heat hands. That's boiling heat hands, absolutely. Uh, so now, let me go back to to them blaming. Things right uh, on on green energy. Just I got I have one more video. Okay, uh, this is uh, Governor Greg Abbott. So this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Texas is blessed with multiple sources of energy, such as uh, natural gas and oil uh, and nuclear, as, as well as uh, solar and wind. Uh, but you saw from what Trace said, uh, and that is our wind and our solar got shut down, and, and they were uh, collectively more than 10 percent of our power grid. And that thrust Texas into a situation where it was lacking power in a statewide basis uh, that was power that was spread out by that ERCOT organization, organization that you were talking about. As a result, uh, it just shows uh, that fossil fuel is necessary uh, for the state of Texas as well as other states to make sure that we were, uh, will be able to heat our homes in the wintertime and cool our homes in the summertime. I hate that man. Uh, he's not my favorite guy. You know, I know a few guys, and he's not my favorite guy uh, amongst Certainly. them. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly. So, yeah, that's a good example of uh, Republican governance in action. Deregulation uh, and, of course, uh, free market capitalism. One of the things that really bugs me about the discourse around um, climate change and fossil fuels is this belief mm -hmm. that Republicans keep saying this, like, America needs oil, America needs coal, America needs gas. Literally nobody is saying this elsewise, obviously. And mm -hmm. you can ask anybody, anybody, even the craziest lefties online. Ask them, okay? If we just took all of America off of all fossil fuels day one, of course the country would collapse. Nobody's saying that. We're saying you invest right. in alternative energy, which is what Texas has done because Texas's wind farms contribute about a quarter of the energy that it receives. So clearly investment in alternative energy begets results and it's texas you know that's the oil state but they still did it and that's great that was actually unironically a pretty great benefit of their separation from the federal regulation though they could have done that with federal regulation it's just the way things right. panned out it was a it, one of the consequences of their decision um but they always act like this like libs trying to take away our oil like fuck, we, we, we need it for for driving cars at the very least yeah, I mean, nobody is saying, like, clean break, right? But we are saying eventual break, and we should really do something. You know, I, I'm so, okay, I'm not one of the, the libs. I had this discussion yesterday with my audience uh, about nuclear energy. I, I think nuclear energy has a, has a role to play. It is cleaner than oil and gas. Uh, it's better for the environment, although I know Fukushima, right? Right. Uh, there is that is a way to get us off of fossil fuels. We need nuclear. While energy. we can, we do need nuclear energy, right? And and we also need that all, those other alternative energies, solar and wind and geothermal, and then whatever else. I mean, um, I don't know if it was you or, or or Lance from the Surfs that was talking about how uh, what was it um, Korea or something uh, was doing uh, South Korea had like made a, a fusion reactor or had a fusion reaction for like a, a tenth of a second or something like that. And that was like a giant breakthrough uh, in the new Tokamaks or whatever. Uh, that's interesting stuff. That that I think could be the future as well. One, it's you really know, fusion it's, energy. It's incredible because I feel like um, 
Chernobyl and Three Mile Island might have single-handedly fucked the planet because of all the bad optics yeah. around nuclear power. That if it if right. we had just handled Three Mile Island and if the fucking Soviets had appropriately handled um, uh, Chernobyl, that pr people probably would have been completely on board with nuclear power because it is the safest form. Even if you account mm -hmm. for all the disasters that have been caused by um, by nuclear power plant meltdowns, it pales in comparison to the total amount of damage uh, done by fossil fuel burning. You know, if you count in like right. externalities too, like like uh, lung mm -hmm. cancer or lowered lifespans due to pollution, then we're talking exponentially more destructive than anything nuclear has ever done. The only thing that people really worry about these days, I think, or should worry about, is nuclear waste. But I feel like mm -hmm. if the international community got together and just chose a spot somewhere i don't fucking know it can be in nevada it can be in mongolia i don't give a shit just chose a spot and built a proper bunker because they keep they, they always want to trade off responsibility for this like no country it's 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 a nimby shit no country wants right. to have the stockpile of perpetually irradiated residue in their borders you know yeah so i'm i'm kind of having the same problem in my chat that you sometimes have in yours uh -oh. um uh, yeah, <laughs> about nuclear energy. Uh, oh, what was it? Somebody said, well, you know, oh, well, nuclear energy is, is safer than wind farm. No, we didn't say that. Yeah, neither of us believe that that's the, that's the case. Safer than coal, though. It is absolutely safer than coal. Safer than oil. Safer than building pipelines all over the place that will eventually leak and, you know, it explode sometimes and yeah, end up contaminating groundwater. Also, it's uh, like so magic, too. Uranium right. is literally just like a rock that emits energy. It's like, it's like everything else is, you know, it's like, oh, we burn through the oil. Like, oh, okay, we burn the coal. Great. We turn the turbines. Phenomenal. But then it's just like magic rock. <laughs> it's, you know, don't touch it, but it is magic. Don't touch it. Don't lick it. Don't lick it. Just put, put it, put it in a reactor and make it work for you, you know? And then figure out, of course, nuclear waste, as you mentioned, is a is a big problem. But we can we can figure out how to do something about that. And of course, if we actually invest in technologies to actually figure out how to, you know, produce energy uh, energy reactions without actually creating any uh, waste, that would be a fantastic thing. We just have to. I, I, it feels like we just need to do some research, and we need to you know look into it, and we need to figure out how to do it. Because I don't know, like. Human beings, I think, are pretty smart, That's and, and we can figure things out. Uh, human beings are smart. People are dumb. <laughs> that's that's usually what I go by, right? People in large crowds can be very, very stupid, uh, but people in general can be very, very smart, and they can come up with amazing solutions. The fact that we are talking, you're in, you know, California. I'm assuming I'm in Michigan, and we can have a conversation over online, um, is kind of amazing. Human ingenuity is awesome and so we just need to tap that and we need to foster that and we need to allow people to come up with better solutions than what we have right now because what we have right now is not working hey this is only a little bit off topic have sure. you ever heard of a show called um it's 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 a uh, dark dark tourism dark tourist something like that I don't think so. That that uh, name is not coming to mind. Something. It's something. Wait, chat. I don't think that's the name, but dark matter. No. Uh, wait. Okay. I. I. Dark tourist. It must have been dark tourist or dark tourism dark or something like that. But anyway, hey. um, in one of the episodes, he travels to some town that was downwind of some nuclear disaster, and everything's irradiated and what have you. And okay. um, and you see like the the remnants of this town, and it's just it's a wasteland now because everyone had to flee. And it's incredible right. because mathematically, coal, oil, gas exponentially more destructive than that. We just don't see it. All the harm mm -hmm. gets pumped into the atmosphere, so we don't. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's an externality. Whereas all the harm caused by nuclear is very immediate. The harm caused right. by nuclear is there's a meltdown, which by the way can be prevented with. With appropriate regulations, every time there's a nuclear meltdown, it's because something beforehand went wrong, um, mm -hmm. but, like preventably wrong. But anyway, it's just mm -hmm. interesting. We don't even think about all the harm that uh, fossil fuels do because all of it is 
distributed and decentralized in a way that makes it less obvious. Also, into the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the ocean has absorbed uh, the vast majority of CO2. It could be far worse if we had, you know, less ocean on this planet. It, we might be already in a scorching, you know, burning hellhole. Uh, but thankfully, the ocean. But the ocean has, you know, has its limits. And we're getting to the point where you have coral bleaching and you have ocean, uh, ocean acidification. You have the softening of shells of, you know, crabs and stuff like that. Uh, and that's a that's a real problem. You know, we're, we're approaching that limit and uh, we really shouldn't be putting out more, you know, uh, uh, more of that carbon and methane in the atmosphere, those greenhouse gases. Though, Dark curiosity. But. On the other hand, the deep sea is terrifying and our silent war of pollution and climate change against it is a moral and just cause, which will end in our victory. Uh, fighting the murlocs and crab people, true. Have you seen what goes on down there? The little skittery, creepy crawlies down the ocean floor? I'm okay. I have not, because... We will be prevail. <laughs> we just dump a few more old boots and tires into the ocean. Yeah, just need a few more uh, BP oil spills, okay? And our, our conquest will be complete. <laughs> true, true. All right, you want to move on? Uh, sure, yeah. All right, let, let's, do, let's do some Republican cancel culture, uh, which is always fun. So here's a bit of an ironic story. Uh, the party that loves to complain about cancel culture is partaking in it. Uh, so now it's following the failed second impeachment of uh, trial of Donald Trump over the Capitol insurrection, uh, where even GOP members voted to convict the president, seven of them, uh, their respective states have decided to censure or even plan to censure those Republicans over their votes. You know, you had people like uh, uh, Mitt Romney, Lisa Murkowski, uh, and, you know, get censured uh, by their own party. And so here's Senator John Thune, right? Um, the Associated Press reports that Thune defended his uh, GOP colleagues who voted to convict Trump in the first interview he's had since he voted to acquit the president the former president. Um, this, there is a strong case made. Uh, people could come to a different conclusions. If we're going to criticize the media and the left for cancel culture, we can't be doing that ourselves. Jump in. Uh, cancel culture doesn't mean anything. I don't even know what to say. Cancel culture has <laughs> completely and utterly ceased to mean anything. Cancel culture for a very brief period in time had a definition. And it was when... Um, people within a given community were being impugned for um for for minor deviations failing a purity mm -hmm. test that was what cancel culture was to me okay but nowadays cancel culture is any consequence any criticism to any behavior and in this case i actually think it's the former i mean if we're if we're talking about like censoring people for the legal um for their, you know, legally ordained uh, responsibilities as a senator to decide to convict or not. Um, and rather than challenge their arguments, they're just trying to, like, shame the people who did it. That's pretty pathetic. I mean, you do have some experience with... Oh, kitty. Adam. I'm, I'm immediately distracted by the cute cat. Well, he'll be here for probably not too long before he wiggles out, so... Hopefully it won't be too much of a distraction. Oh, it's fine. Absolutely fine. So look, um, I actually do believe there is a cancel culture. And I think that it, in a lot of cases it can be good. In a lot of cases it can be bad. It can be absolutely weaponized against people um, in, in, you know, in, in very negative ways and have negative impacts. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like it can serve a purpose – and then it can also be an incredible hindrance. And I think, you know, holding people accountable is absolutely fine for things that they've done and things that they've said if they still hold on to those beliefs. Where I deviate from like, oh, you know, cancel culture um, is, is really like, all right, I, I think that if you've apologized, I think if you've, you know, like changed your beliefs or whatever or, or owned up to it in the past, then you should be uncanceled. Yeah, I uh, think— and it is, well, people are very people are very punitive online um, because True. people people don't have a lot online. In interpersonal friendships, you normally have a, a solid mutual bond of trust that can mm -hmm. weather some minor negative incidents. But online, 
there's always this suspicion. Anyone you like, anyone you follow, they could turn out to be an absolute piece of shit. So because of that, I think people are really, really willing to drop them at a hat, especially since an unwillingness to drop somebody like that can lead to you being maligned by your own friend group. And at that point, you're kind of displacing the negativity directed against the content creator towards yourself. I don't know how mm -hmm. I feel about cancel culture, like conceptually, being used mm -hmm. when it comes to political discourse, because in that case, there is an obligation to challenge the things these people do and say. But at the same right. time, like, I really wish Republicans could appreciate the fact, the undeniable fact, that Republicans are sensitive bitch babies and always have been. And their <laughs> delusional pretense that they are anything but that has always been, um, well, it has always prevented them from being able to properly engage with political discourse, you know? Yeah. No, oh, no, it's absolutely true. They they are like bitch babies. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they bitch, ba yeah, the no, they're bitch babies. Yeah, they complain absolutely. all the time. They cry Constantly. about everything. They are fragile. Mm -hmm. And they are, and by the way, they are insanely cynically willing to challenge people or to condemn people or to cancel people based on identity politics, that they will be the first yes. ones to invoke accusations of sexism or accusations of racism if they can get away with it and they will do so shamelessly and they know their followers won't give a fuck about it because their followers True. are in, in on the buck. Their followers are thinking, ha ha, now they're giving them a taste of their own medicine. No, absolutely. I don't, I don't think we disagree at all. Um, but it is kind of funny, like, as, as you said, they are complete bitch babies and they're canceling their own, you know, they're canceling their own senators basically for for daring to vote against Donald Trump or to vote to convict Donald Trump so that he doesn't go in and, and, and continue to run the party. But I think we can both agree that Donald Trump is the Republican Party at this point. He is the logical and I call this the logical conclusion of conservative thought. Uh, he, he's where you end up, essentially. Uh, or he's one of the, the the last stages of where you end up before you get to an actual competent fascist, if there is such a thing. Yeah, I actually wonder. Wait, I actually want your opinion on this. So a sure. common line, and I said this too, was that um, um, Donald Trump is a, a great threat. However, what if the next fascist who comes along isn't a fucking moron, you know? That was my, my line. But the more mm -hmm. I've thought about it, now I think... I think that Donald Trump's stupidity was actually a tremendous aid to him in everything that he tried to say and do. By being so constantly and relentlessly boorish, by being so incompetent, he actually obfuscated the severity of a lot of what he and his party did. And I don't know if the Republican Party is smart enough. It sounds mean, but I don't mm -hmm. know if they're smart enough, or at least enough of an appreciator of an intelligence, to find a more savant fascist mm -hmm. better than trump that that might actually be the relevant trump might actually be the ideal fascist for that party yeah he it, it really is look I, i've often said that the republican establishment you know the the mitch mcconnell's uh, of the world they they don't know what they're dealing with they don't i don't think they understand the, the, the threat within their own party and the kind of monster that they have created that they now have to square off against now they have to to try to control donald trump uh, because he does have such a, a gigantic, you know, following within the party. And, and of course, the reason, I mean, we, we can go through multiple reasons why Trump has such a, a large following within the party. I, I tend to think that it's because he allows people to be the worst version of themselves. He encourages that because he himself is that he is a mirror. He is the Fox News president, right? He's like the average Fox News watcher, only he's just got lots of potentially lots of money and and an actual power. Um, but, but you know, the mannerisms and, and the things that he believes, the things that he feels, uh, allegedly are no different than the average Fox News viewer. And yeah. so there's so much in common. Yeah, well, he, he is relatable. And he is relatable. Right. Because when I, whenever I'm acting like a boorish, obstinate child, I think like, oh, wow, that was rather Trumpian of me. He's relatable in that respect. People can't mm -hmm. relate to Barack Obama. He's an erudite, True. you know, legal scholar. Like, like okay, you know, great voice, mm -hmm. like, great speaker. Don't get me wrong, but nobody's watching Obama and thinking, that's so me. I feel like 
I, I, it sounds dumb. I feel like Donald Trump is for the average Republican. Like, like, yes, fucking Elsa for, for, from Frozen or like the Let It Go song or like this is their coming out moment. You know, they feel cucked. They've been cucked by the mainstream establishment for decades and decades. The libtards on Wall Street and Hollywood and both coasts have ruled the country, something, something, brown people, immigration. But now finally, now that everything's gotten this bad, they don't have to care about civility anymore. They don't have to care about anything anymore. They only have to care about power because things have gotten this bad. They have to, they have no choice. So they have no problem mm -hmm. with Donald Trump. I don't think they have a problem with any of the obvious corruption he demonstrates because they're right. thinking whatever, things got to this point, this needed to happen, you know? And in the Republican establishment itself, has always only cared about power. And again, Mitch right. McConnell knows how to wield power. He's always known how to wield power effectively when it ever, you know, whenever it falls into his lap. So much so that I think, you know, going in the uh, on the cuck line that you were talking about, so much so that it cut, uh, you know, Senate Democrats uh, into, you know, e even when they had the power of the minority, the power of the filibuster for at least some time, uh, and now have the power of actually having a slim majority that they continue to still say, ah, we can't really do anything, man. Uh, and yes, I, I realize that we've got people like Joe Manchin that, that tend to get in the way, Kristen Sinema, uh, for example, for, for being, you know, uh, basically centrist Democrats and who I think tend to, I mean, be, because they're in the position now of being like a, you know, in, in the way of getting, um, they need them. They, they need, the Democrats need to court you know, uh, Joe Manchin in order to get anything passed. And Joe Manchin feels super, super important. Like, you're going to have to kiss my ass now. Like, I'm the rare centrist. I'm the I'm the blue dog. I'm in the middle now. And you've got to appeal to me. You know, it's that it's that sense of importance. Um, but going, you know, going back around because I'm kind of ranting here and like going all over the place. Uh, but, you know, he's their Walter still White. That's what he is. Everyone who watched Breaking Bad knew that Walter White was a piece of shit, at the very least mm -hmm. from episode four, mm -hmm. when he turned down the money from from the, the the Gretchen, you know? But even though he's a gigantic piece of shit, they feel some cathartic sympathy to him because they sympathize with his pride and with his downfall and... They sympathize with the underlying emotional justifications for his actions, even if they believe, like, okay, yeah, that was obviously too far, this or the other, okay? That's what he is, okay? Mm -hmm. He's Trump is their John Wick, okay? And the dog getting killed was when the left put women in politics, and now Donald Trump is the John Wick. Have you seen John Wick? Yeah. I, ha I haven't seen I John Wick. I have not seen John Wick. I haven't seen John Wick uh, either. All I all I know is that it's uh, uh, Keanu Reeves being badass. Which, by the way, Keanu Reeves is an awesome person. So, yeah, I hear he's the uh, Sigma male. Super super nice. <laughs> what what's what's by the way? I was I was kind of curious about what the Ligma male is. I've been seeing that around. Um, Ligma nuts. Oh, I get it. I get it now. Okay. Yeah. So that's Sig Ligma male. Old. Sigma male is an actual thing, or well, people are treating it like an actual thing. It's like an alpha male, except you've you, you've moved yourself out of the traditional masculine hierarchy structure. You know? Ah, okay. So you see, I'm I'm old, so you have to explain these things to me. The you you youngins with your internet culture. Would you your say? Memes. Would you say that you are removed? from the, the, the traditional or the, the sort of contemporary meme culture then? Maybe maybe you are a Sigma male. A little bit, just just a little bit though. Um, I, I try to keep up with the with the latest memes. Is Doge still a thing? Is that, is that a thing? Doge a thing, right? started being a new thing, but it's a different type of thing from before. Yeah. So Doge originally was like, wow, such good, many pats. And now Doge is comics of sheebs and other dogs getting in wacky and uncharacteristic situations with Photoshop. But it's a different type of humor. But that's the new doge. Okay. I wasn't actually asking seriously. <laughs> well, but... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you know, you don't want to get into the the epistemology. <laughs> you, you want you don't want to get into the 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 um you know the it's underlying best, so. metaphysical. Yeah, okay. Just just you know, 
Like I'll I'll spend some time on knowyourmeme.com. It's a good good resource. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about some trans rights. I'm, I like. Yeah, for that. Right. Yeah, I think trans I'll rights. Like, are cool. Awesome. So recently, there's been a rash of anti-trans legislation being proposed all over the country, uh, with at least 20 states considering legislation that would roll back transgender rights, mostly going after young trans women or trans girls. Uh, And now, of course, um, it turns out that these anti-trans bills are being backed by some pretty big organizations, these hate groups. So let me give an example of a couple of those. Uh, Idaho just passed two anti-trans laws during the pandemic, one of them Uh, signed by Governor Brad Little, uh, bans transgender people from correcting their gender marker on their birth certificates, and the other bans transgender girls from competing in school sports. Uh, In fact, a lot of those bills actively go after trans girls and their participation in sports. Uh, And they've got titles like, get this, get this stuff, Vulnerable Child Protection Act and Vulnerable Child Compassion Act. And protect uh, protection act. They added compassion in there. Little Gosh. girl protection, compassion, mother, father, love, child, help, America. heart, save America, freedom. It's like a it's like a fucking um, tag uh, tag accumulations done by bots. You mm-hmm. know where they well they'll you know is, they tweet out forty hashtags with everything. Yeah, this is this is like old Frank Lunt shit, where he would go and and like okay, so we want to pass this 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 you know bill. That gives, you know, strips poor people of all their money and gives it to rich people a la Robin Hood style, right? We're just going to come in, we're going to beat you up, and we're going to take your cash out of your wallet and give it to a rich CEO who happens to be outside your door. That's what we're going to do. We're going we're to call it the Freedom and Compassion, uh, uh, you know, extra, you know, fantastic money act, okay? And and and, and it's going to be the America fund, uh, the America money you know, uh, growth act or, the, or something like America that. America funny growth, big economy based Epic 420. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, just shit like that. And so that's what they're, they're doing with these trans bills. Um, they, you know, many of them, in addition to attacking trans women in sports, also criminalize doctors who provide gender affirming care, like puberty blockers. I know you've talked a lot about this subject on your show, uh, or require schools to out trans kids to their parents if they ask to go by certain pronouns. Uh, and of course, in, in a lot of the places where this is happening, where these bills are are, are getting passed or, or proposed, that could be really, really dangerous for a child in school because they might have like super religious parents or, you know, uh, anti, anti-LGBT, you know, uh, anti-trans parents and, and things like that. So that's, and, 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 you know, being a teenager who was a trans person, again, I haven't had that experience, but I mean, there's a reason where suicide rates are incredibly high for that demographic. Um, you know, an interesting, and, statistic, and this is that help. an interesting statistic that comes out of, I think the 2020, uh, LGBT, I, there's a big document name, but the mm-hmm. likelihood of a trans youth Com- attempting suicide drops by 15 sixteenths or by about I think 94 percent if you have a supportive parent who accepts your gender identity blah blah like you just have to have a supportive mm-hmm. parent that's it 15 sixteenths right. sorry I think wow. that's actually 93 percent reduction in percentage points so so people always talk about the suicidality of trans people as though it's mm-hmm. like an inherent component of their behavior when it is the, it's not the, absolutely not obviously it's a sensitive issue for trans people if you want to make the argument trans people care a lot about being gendered properly then okay fine sure but once mm-hmm. you do that you you you, you nearly fix the problem right there. And keep in mind, we're talking about the suicidality of youth. Youth already right. have a disproportionately high rate of suicidality because of all the dumbass right. hormone bullshit. So we're talking about right. an incredible reduction with for very, very little, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and it you have to have a, a house that's and, – and, and, you know, parents that are supportive. And, I mean, okay, so, again, having not lived through this – I still, I, it's still really easy to understand why, you know, people, young people, young trans uh, women, especially, you know, 
end up committing suicide because you have such a, a negative, terrible stigma. And you have, of course, unfortunately, you have a lot of older people, a lot of parents who are doing stuff like this, who are passing these bills, who are making it OK for their peers also to to go and attack them and, and mislabel them and misgender them and dead name them. And and all this just is horrible stuff that, of course, destroys the mental health of, of, of these of these young women. Well, yeah, it's, a, so, well, it's, it's just it's just a really obvious get, right? Like, uh, yeah, why are, tra why are trans people commit suicides? I mean, why are forty percent? Uh, what could possibly be leading to that? And then you have all this trans bathroom bill bullshit. It's so yeah. obvious. And the cruelty, by the way, the cruelty is the point with regards to these things. I've talked mm -hmm. about this. I don't actually think any of these Republican legislators personally care really about trans people in bathrooms. I don't. I don't, don't think that. But when you center the discourse around cultural issues like this, which mm -hmm. can be difficult to talk out to people who are passionate about it, you distract people from issues of real import. Now, I'm not saying that trans issues aren't important. I'm saying that we keep fighting these social battles because they're a proxy for broader institutional change. And as long as the Republican Party mm -hmm can continue to convince their constituencies that they're the only thing standing in between America and BLM burning down the suburbs and men pretending to be women storming into the school bathroom and assaulting their daughters, as long as they're convinced that the Republican Party is that, that bastion, you know, that wall, that bulwark, mm -hmm. they are oh, yeah. not going to pay attention to any of the heinous shit the Republicans do. They'll never need to pay attention to it. Why would they? You know? No, exactly, exactly. And that's an excellent point that you brought up, uh, where you have these Republicans who don't actually give a shit, but they use them as wedge issues because, understandably, like, Republicans don't have plans. They don't have policy, really. Their, their, their entire, you know, the entire party really exists as nothing more than a reactionary movement towards, so you know, against social progress. And really also, as I've mentioned before, a money funneling scheme to rich people, to donors, and let's be honest about that as well. That's that's ninety, yeah, I think ninety percent of 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 their existence right there, and they use these wedge issues. And it is funny the timing that this comes out right after Joe Biden becomes president of the United States. Hmm, that's it's real weird. And right after Democrats, uh, you know, take over uh, the Senate and and the the House of Representatives. Oh, yeah, now I'm we're worried about bathrooms. R it's well, like the caravans. Uh, right. And they, well, they, yeah, they did it every time with the caravans in 2018. Exactly. They pushed this narrative um, uh, uh, that the caravan from the south of the border was going to overwhelm America. Donald Trump right. used his emergency powers to direct the National Guard there. Nothing ended up happening. You had the trans bathroom bills all throughout like 2017 and 2018. And now it feels like it's being brought up again. And now we're currently mm -hmm. dealing with uh, trans women participating in sports, which, and I'll say it again, I've said this a million times. I do think there are some interesting, thought-provoking, and perhaps necessary questions to be answered there with regards okay. to the medical science behind the process. But Republicans mm -hmm. don't engage in that process in good faith, not even slightly. They don't no. care about the science. It's a proxy battle for what they really care about, which is hating trans people. And they only really mm -hmm. care about that because that's a proxy for distracting Republican voters from how fucked they're getting by the Republican Party. Absolutely. So there are some organizations that are behind this push, right? You're not going to be surprised to find out. Heritage Foundation, uh, the Heritage Foundation, Eagle Forum, and the Alliance Defending Freedom. Again, with these 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 ridiculous names, I, I want to call them Orwellian, but I think it's like misusing the term Orwellian at this point. It's pretty odd because uh, this is what. Yeah, but it's the shit that Orwell was warning about, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, what well, Ministry of the, Peace, Ministry of Truth, right? Being right. respectively a war department and a propaganda department. So okay, I. Again, I've watched your content before, and so when you mentioned uh, Ministry of Truth, that immediately takes me back to Babylon 5, right? I watch that. I'm a, I'm a fucking dork, all right? I'm a nerd. I watch all the, all the, all the different sci-fi. You know I'm in Babylon so, 5? You are. Kind of. My father worked as one of the, um, yeah, yeah. the CGI um, people, where one of the people who did some of the graphical effects, and one of the ship awesome. designations was given my birth date. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's cute, right? Yeah, yeah. That is, that, is awesome. Because I was born but, during production. I was born in 1994. 
Oh man, you're you're so young compared to me. <laughs> I'm only about ten years older, actually. You, I good. mean, I feel like we look about the same age. So we do. I'm oh, I'm I'm kind of baby face. So it, it, without the beard, I would look worse. Hey, much worse, actually. That's why. Hey, <laughs> that's why I keep the beard. Hey, listen, okay, this is our makeup, okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's true. And and I, I feel like it compensates for what's missing up here, over here. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. I'll be honest about it. Throw it out, wrap it around top, I, you know? Yeah, I'm 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 not gonna like Tim Pool with the beanie or anything like that. I just, you know, shave it off. Shave it off. Just 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 be honest with yourself and admit that you're going bald. It's okay. It's gonna be all right. Well, Guys, I'm a, it's, it's not a struggle okay. I'll have to go through, I'm afraid. I am um, okay. I am very fortunate. Even my like great grandfather had hair on his way out, you know. Well, you you actually get it. I think uh, male pattern baldness comes from your uh, mother's line. It's actually. all it's all directions. I'm very blessed. My fertile hair glands. So I'll compensate in some other way, you know. Maybe I'll end up having like a <laughs> cock and ball cancer, you know. But it's okay though. It's it's okay to be bald. It's okay to be short. It's okay. Yeah, of course. It's okay. Well, you mentioned Babylon 5. There was a line I always yes. like um, from the next generation in, um, in, in Star Trek where it wasn't actually from the show, but um, somebody said like, hey, in 2432, wouldn't they have figured out a cure for um, male, male pattern, pattern baldness? baldness by then? Right, of course. And then, and then uh, Patrick Stewart said, by that time, they won't care, you know? Exactly. Right. I right. love that. I've, I'm familiar with that quote. It's good. It's good quote. It's classic, even. Wait, just a it, moment. It is being, absolutely classic. I'm being beckoned. What's up? Yes, absolutely. Right. We're being uh, another cat might be delivered soon, so I'm I'm keeping up with it. Baby kitty. Yes. <laughs> my mine mine don't actually like come through and and you know, like mine usually does spend time in this room, uh, but he's not in here right now, and he's usually like laying down. He only like jumps on me while I'm trying to actually work on the stories. Uh, but never does it when I'm filming. It's just weird. But uh, I appreciate it. They all have they all have their own way of um, expressing it's love, true. right? Absolutely, absolutely true. Um, but okay, so there was. Um, uh, I was talking about the Alliance defending. Freedom, yeah, sorry, we, I completely right? derailed. <laughs> I apologize. Don't worry about it. Don't no. Th that's what I love about having these conversations online is that you can just you can do that, and it, and it's it's like. I like having natural conversations with people, you know, and, and I try not to run my show like super rigid. It's, it's good to do. It's good to have these good conversations. If you've but, ever seen a string uh, anyway. of mine, you know that rigidity is not exactly a, a, a characteristic that I value. Oftentimes, I don't even get to discussing mm -hmm. the things that I put up in the stream title, which is fine <laughs> by me. Whenever, uh -huh. whenever I'm planning a stream, you know, I hate it. Planning a stream sucks. Um, like, what am I going to talk about? I don't know what I'm going to want to talk about the next day. Actually, streaming's fun, though, as long as you can talk about whatever you want. Here, I got another one. Absolutely. Ah, uh, look at him. <laughs> Her or them. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have a fleshy, fleshy cat who hates being held. We'll make it work. You make it work. You make there it work. Go. Look at that. It's precious. Good baby. Absolutely precious. <laughs> All right. So the so the ADL, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Alliance Defending Freedom. They're actually uh, believed to be behind last year's Idaho law that banned trans girls from uh, playing sports. And in 2016, they were behind laws uh, in at least five states to ban transgender people from using the correct bathroom in public. Uh, and so they're they're behind a lot of these uh, a lot of these bills. Uh, they've also been advocating against uh, LGBTQ people in court, defending the uh, Kate shop. You remember the Kate shop in, in, in Colorado? Oh, I remember. Wait, what's the full name of the ADL? It is the Alliance Defending Freedom. I'm okay. sorry. It's the, sorry. the there ADF. Were, okay, sorry. right. The, yeah, there were people in chat, the Anti-Defamation League, and it seems a little out of sorry, character but... for them to engage in it that. Would yeah. Just clarifying. Sorry, that, that, was, that was my bad. That, it's one of those things that, that happens when you stream. Okay. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Ah, all right, there we go. <laughs> the cat fled. So they also represented three cis, uh, cisgender girls in Connecticut who sued their state because they had to compete against two black transgender girls at track meets. So apparently, what, did they get blown out? 
Is is that what happened? I'm unfamiliar with that case. No, the, so we, we specifically talked about this on stream just a little while ago. But basically, what happened was this... The, <laughs> <laughs> these two trans girls is in Connecticut and they did they're really good in a track meet and mm -hmm. uh, they got first and second and the person who later went on to lambast this whole thing she got in eighth place but if she had gotten in sixth place if the trans women had not participated she would have gotten in sixth place and that right. would have been enough for her to have qualified um, for like the regional uh, championship. The problem is the two trans girls who came in first did not win the regional championship, which means that the girl mm -hmm. who came in sixth place well behind those two absolutely would have not either. So it's an utterly meaningless issue. But this woman, this girl has been running up and down conservative media. She'll probably be a, a you know, a Lauren Chen type in a couple of years. Um, right, right, running up and down social media, talking about how it, she was robbed, how she could have won if it weren't for them, how her youthful dreams of athletic performance were squashed by the cruel transgender oh, lobby. <coughs> she really plays it up. That's the whole thing, basically. She sounds salty. That's I oh think that's no, she's mad. She's big mad. She's very very mad. B big man. Uh, no, it, it, it really it kind of feels like it's. Uh, just like a cover her for her really poor performance. She should have uh, practiced a little bit more. She should have, uh, should have bootstrapped it, you know? Worked a little harder. Yeah, well, the thing that bothers me too is, so, okay, cancel me if you like. Connecticut actually doesn't require any medical transitioning before um, trans women are allowed to participate in sports with cis women. I okay. think that can lead to some issues because of, uh, especially okay. later on into puberty, if you've experienced a male puberty, you had a higher androgen sensitivity and your pituitary gland pumped out hormones that led to a higher degree of athletic performance. And that is a okay. bias. And there is something to talk about there, but that's not what the discussion has been. As always, right. there's no room for that. Nothing, there's no room for that. Instead, it's transgender people are destroying women's sports. They're corrupting, they're polluting it. And they're actually not even trans women they're men and we hate them and with all of that with there being no room for discourse what what is this right. but another pathetic attempt at directing right. hate against the trans community yeah i mean look you know they have situations where you know they they separate things by weight class and things like that i don't really find that too entirely different if they were to talk about like the nuances of the situation, because you know it turns out that uh, unfortunately nuance tends to get lost in these conversations. Republicans are not coming from a good place, though. They're not coming from good faith. They're bad faith actors. So, you know, if we actually had good faith people having these discussions and setting these, you know, setting these rules and 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 talking about them to make sure that competition, you know, across all genders is is in, in all genders and sexual orientations, whatever, is is com is as fair as it can be. I don't have any problem with that, but I do have a problem with these Republicans uh, that you know continue to not be as uh, to go back to the beginning of what we said. They don't really even care about these issues, so of course they're not going to use nuance. No, they're going to frame it as. Uh, transgender people destroying sports, transgender bad, you know, all that stuff bad. Well, and then we have got we've got to ban them to protect the girls. They did the same thing with um with uh, gay marriage too. Um right. or, or really with any issue regarding any my really any minority issue where maybe there's some discourse to be had. Okay. So I'll mm. so again, I'll risk cancellation. On the face of it, there are some people who believe that it's natural for uh, a, a child to be raised by a man and a woman. Now, that's not a belief that I've held to, but I can understand right. why some people would intuitively believe that's sort of like how people are supposed to be raised. There's a lot of cultural conditioning that's gone into that. So right. now we have the research. We know for a fact that that is not a problem at all. There's nothing inherent, mm. nothing intrinsic. You do not need some balance between men and women to raise a kid and that's not how humans used to be we used to be raised in tribal communities where right. the children would be raised by whoever the fuck had the time to raise the children that was not one man one woman that was the tribe collectively um but i can understand why some people may have been concerned to begin with but as always that iota that minuscule crumb of a legitimate concern has been blown up out of proportion into this 
well, it was at least, this massive discourse on children being adopted by gay parents. They'll be ra they'll be, they'll be broken inside. Their brains, their hearts, their minds, they'll be undeveloped. It's, it's child abuse. There's no discussion to be had here. Right. The, again, all nuance tends to be sucked out the window on purpose in order to create a narrative, in order to create, you know, it, it, there's a reason that they call these wedge issues. They create a wedge. And they make, you know, the two sides pit them against each other while, of course, the people who are making up these wedge issues and trying to divide people have an easier time picking your pocket. Yeah, well, well, this is why I want people to get off. <coughs> Excuse me, my apologies. This is why people, I want people to get off the culture war bullshit. I want them right. to get off the culture war bullshit so desperately. There's nothing I want more oh God, yeah. than for them to get off th that particular line because... It, it destroys political discourse. Nobody even talks about politics mm -hmm. anymore. Have you noticed that? Even when you go yes. conservative channels, Ben Shapiro, Crowder, nobody talks about the merits of policies being implemented. Nobody talks about dreams of a better world. Nobody talks about yep. meaningful criticisms to existing institutional structures. All of it is this constant reality TV back and forth about who's bad this day or who's canceled this day. It's rage bait. It's rage bait. So what, G Gina Carano, Carano, Carano or Carano? Carano. Carano. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Gina, Gina, <laughs> Car Gina Carano. Okay. What were people talking about with Gina Carano? Was it a nuanced conversation on the legitimacy of no. comparing conservatives in America to Jews in Nazi Germany? Was it a conversation on the populist and potentially anti-Semitic undertones of that one Illuminati comic she posted? No! The discourse is on, she's canceled, so now she's going to work on the Ben Shapiro movie. That's it. That's all we get. We have nothing. There's nothing to talk right. about. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I talked about that. Um the entire discussion is about how it's the woke SJWs. That's who actually canceled Gina Carano. And for me, it was like, no, she look, you know, Disney has a, uh, it has certain expectations for people who work for the company. Right. And they sign contracts and Disney likes to be super squeaky clean. Okay. They don't like when people cause controversy. And so she caused controversy knowingly did so. And so that's why they, they didn't even fire her. What they did is they just said, okay, you're not, you're just not going to come back. We're not going to sign you on for any more shows. Yeah, they didn't re-up right? the contract. But in a, exactly. in, a, in a sane world, even in a political world, anyone could have understood that this was the case, okay? Anybody. Right. If you work for Disney and you freak out like that on social media, yeah, of course. You're an actress. It's your job to be as palatable and neutral yep. to the public eye as possible because you don't want to bring a negative eye brought to your attempt, like your projects. That's that's your job. That That's literally part of your job description. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there were stipulations laid out in Disney contracts which specifically prohibit certain types of behavior on social media. I would not be even remotely no, there surprised is, yeah. by that. Yeah. Absolutely. So why are we, why I mean, is everyone up in arms about this? Why are we, uh, we're all soy facing over here. Sorry, I mean conservatives, by the way. No <laughs> right. left leaning person would give a fuck about this if it weren't for conservatives losing their mind over it. If, if Gina had gotten fired and that, like, that, that'd be like, oh, okay. Right. Well, yeah, she flew too okay. close to the sun. They're the one, oh, the free speech council culture. But they know this. And by the way, the same thing would have happened if there was an actor who talked about like mm -hmm. Antifa, like firebombing police mm -hmm. cars or something like that. Mm -hmm. If that had happened working for Disney, they would have been fired too. But I doubt that lefties would have thrown anywhere near as much of a fit over that as conservatives did over Gina. Yeah. And again, that goes back to the fact that it was rage bait. And, and, and look, the, these same conservatives that are now rallying behind Gina Carano were the same ones that were like, as soon as she was introduced as a character or her character, Cara Dune, was introduced, were like, oh, woke SJW shoving a woman down our throat in Star Wars. Same people. Total hypocrisy. Yeah, I think Vadim put out a tweet about that where like, that was, was the, yeah, yeah, the headlines excellent. a month ago versus the headlines today, you know? Brilliant tweet. And an and absolute, you know, like great showcase of conservative hypocrisy over this but they don't care they don't they will never care oh. about that i i don't think they just do what they're told to follow it's really quite distressing you know i'd like to have more faith in people than that which is warranted by the behavior i see from conservatives but you, you also have to understand that cons conservatives i think are uh, uh especially the ones that are always online they're kind of like the always online left you know there there's not a lot of them but they're really fucking loud
True, but the really online righties have a lot of institutional backing that we don't. That's like Charlie true. Kirk, for That's example. True. You have like Charlie Kirk or Ben Shapiro. I don't think Ben Shapiro has an official affiliation with the GOP, but like he he's almost legitimized to the point where it feels like Charlie Kirk does directly have ties to the GOP. And they right. engage in the lowest common denominator of political discourse, but they get pumped up. The Democratic Party does nothing for the loud, whiny sycophants uh, on the left. W w mm -hmm. And if only they did, I would, I would be, I'm letting it be known, I would be delighted to accept the contract from the DNC, okay? Give me... <laughs> uh, give me a speaking spot at your your next big rally, okay? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody will like it. Yeah, look, uh, uh, I think what you do though is you're a master of subversion. I think so, uh, subvert those you know centrists uh, libs into, and that's kind of what I try to do on my show. Is I put out a lot of lib shit. Let's let's be honest, right? Dunking on Trump, dunking on conservatives. I love it, but also it's a good way to also introduce lefty concepts i'll throw like a little thing about worker worker co-ops you know one of my audience members actually asked me to uh, get your opinion on uh, how we could do more democracy in the workplace so if you want to tackle that you know like that's a, an excellent question but i try to sneak those things in you know try to try to radicalize the, the the centrist libs into coming or around to a little bit more of a left world. Well, yeah, that's view. the pipeline, right? And they've been doing that. Yeah. They've been doing that even better than we have, too. Because every conservative channel, you go Crowder, Ben Shapiro, whatever, they kind of dog whistle pretty hard, too, you know? Yeah. You, you, very rarely will you watch, like, a it's moderate a conservative channel, and it's just moderate conservatism, and they never signal at anything more substantial or more severe. That almost never happens. Usually there's something it's more. Hardcore. There's, like, an underlying tone of white supremacy or white nationalism mm -hmm. or of like more vitriolic uh um transphobia and that pushes people down to more extreme ends you know right and and, and you know they've dropped the dog like they, they used to be dog whistles but they've turned into human whistles we can all hear it we can all see it i mean it, you know we we have we have video Right. Of, of these, you know, people saying these things for, for quite some time. And uh, it's it's obvious it's out in the open. The masks are off because conservatives don't really believe in masks anyway uh, at this point and wearing masks. So, you know, they're not they're not trying to hide it uh, because their base is open to it. They all want this. And and I don't know how many numerous people I think we've all pretty much said this. Uh, one of the things that they love uh, and, and can't wait to do. And, and the thing that they complain about the most is they can't say the N word. They really, they desperately want to say the N word. They just, they can't wait. Oh, maybe it's it? the fact that they don't, you know, that they can't normally say it. That's why they want to say it's so bad. It's the bad. forbidden fruit. Okay. It's the forbidden, the forbidden fruit. fruit. They exactly. reach out since, you know, since the day they were born, they've always been, they've been looking for that affirmation. Maybe that'll be the real transracialism. Okay. That'll be, um, yeah, that'll be conservatives <laughs> will pioneer it so they can, find a way to get all their white boys and uh, make it so they can say the N-word without being canceled. Yeah. Just desperately. It's like they're so thirsty for it. One more. Uh, can you do one more? Hit me. All right. Let's do some, uh, let's do some PS5 stuff. So if you're, if you're a video gamer, like myself, uh, Bosh, are you a video gamer? I, I, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I'd, I dabble from time to time. Do you dabble a little bit? A little bit. A little bit of a, little a, a bit. Among Us here and there? A little bit of a Chungus here and there, yeah. <laughs> so, well, if you're a gamer, you might be having a hard time finding a PlayStation 5. You might be wondering uh, why that is. Well, I mean, one of the obvious answers is we're in a pandemic. So production lines have been slowed down, obviously. Uh, and, you know, shipping shipping is, uh, is is impacted as well. So there's no doubt that that's, that's having a – and, of course, it's a very hot item. It's very, very much in demand. What you say? I mean, I, I want a PS5. Uh, yeah, I would certainly say so. Yeah, it, but it, you know, there seems to be another factor as well. Like Demon's Soul. Uh, one that, yeah, one, one that is being reported on finally, uh, and that's the issue of scalpers. Okay, you know, just people that act as middlemen or middle middlemen's middlemen uh, that come in and they they buy up whatever stock there is that that just freshly comes in. They use all sorts of different methods, bots. 
uh, in, in order to try to beat people, you know, into, into, into be able to order these. Uh, and then they go and they, they resell it uh, at a substantial markup. I've seen it as high as uh, $1,100, $1,300 uh, for just, you know, for, for, for a PS5 with like maybe a crappy game or one of the good games, you know, Miles Morales perhaps. Uh, and so it pisses a lot of people off. I'm pissed off. I can't get a PS5. I want a PS5. I tried to get one yesterday. Couldn't get one. <laughs> Kind of, kind of irritating, man. Yeah, I, I mean, but, I want, I want to play Demon Souls. If, once I play Demon yeah. Souls, I will have played every Soulsborne game, Soulsborne Kiro game, um, and you know, I've, sure. I've uh, one hundred percented all of them so far. I think so. You know, we gotta, we gotta get through it. Yeah, you were doing uh, Bloodborne the other day. Yeah, I'm great at that game. I, the logic of Bloodborne, <laughs> the movement, it's just not. Dark Souls is so much more intuitive to me. Even Sekiro yeah. is more intuitive to me. There's something about the movement in Bloodborne that just feels unnatural to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm playing it in a console at 30 FPS instead of on my computer at 60. Maybe that means something to my lizard brain. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. I mean, 30 FPS versus... I, I mostly I mostly game myself on computer, but I still want a PS5 for those exclusives, you know? Yeah. But... These these goddamn scalpers are getting in the way, and yet they want us to feel sorry for them for being maligned. So I have I have two thoughts on this. Okay, on one hand, sure. so I have two thoughts on this. Scalping is basically an inevitable consequence of um, demand exceeding supply. That as long sure. as more people demand a thing than is available, there's always going to be a market for people to price that up on the scalp end. It's like, it, that's not mm -hmm. like, it's not a matter of individuals being morally bad. It's a matter of this is the inevitable consequence of that, unless there's some kind of policy thing that prevents scalping. But even then, good fucking luck preventing scalping. Yeah, that's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good luck legislating that, you know? Sure. The, the real goal here, of course, should be to... Um, to, to make sure that the demand is appropriately met with supply. And you also have the fact that yep. if they could get away with it, um, Sony probably would have priced the initial run of their PS5s at, at $2,000 um, right. for the people who would want to get it early, even if it cost them a tremendous amount. Be, but the only reason they don't do that is because optically that would look terrible and people would lambast mm -hmm. them in the press, so they won't do it. But... Really, right. all the scalpers are doing is using the fact that they don't have a reputation that means anything to get away with pricing these closer to the equilibrium supply demand point. However, that means that they must necessarily adopt themselves the optical mm -hmm. hit that Sony would have taken if they had been the one to engage in tiered pricing from the beginning. So if you're scalping, sure, you may be fulfilling an economic market reality. Mish. But people are going to call you cunts for it, like they would have called Sony cunts if they had done exactly True. what you're doing. That's the price. You want to make money scalping. Okay, people are going to hate you for it. That is the nat that's as much a natural way of things as the process of scalping itself. So I don't know what the mm -hmm. hell they have to complain about. Yet they're complaining. Yeah, they're so complaining. let me go to uh, Forbes here, the, the, liberal, the famously liberal rag Forbes. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Um, here's what, uh, Jordan, uh, one individual, this is uh, in the UK, obviously, um, who co-founded a group known as the lab. They said, there seems to be a lot of bad press on this incredibly valuable industry. And I do not feel that it is justified. All we are acting are, uh, as is uh, a middleman for limited quantity items. <laughs> According to, um, Jordan buying 25 PlayStation 5s and reselling them from about for about $850 a pop. Um, they put this in euros. Uh, so about 700 euros uh, where the base retail price is about 450 euros or about 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, is no different than a retailer buying milk from a wholesaler at a low price before reselling it at a higher price. So there's a problem with that. And that's that yeah. the retailer is providing a service that scalpers are not. What retailers do is they take all of these wholesale bulk items and they assemble them together in a um, in a grocery store that has staff mm -hmm. that work there. It keeps them all at an appropriate temperature and it collects them all for simple and centralized use. 
Whereas the act of buying a PS4 from Sony, or sorry, PS5 from Sony, and the act of buying a PS5 from a scalper are functionally identical. You aren't providing any additional utility to the consumer. Right. All you're doing is upping the price. Um, I mean, yeah, like, th th yeah, this is just, that's not, it's, <sighs> baby, it's bitch babying. It's baby bitching is what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, like, yeah, this it, is how it works. Chat, you get to see the screen, okay? But Jeff can't, because that's it's life. Okay, so you have to settle on what you expect as a price, a fair price for a um, a game console, okay? Let's say we settle on 500, which is pretty pricey historically, but game consoles are getting pretty cool, so whatever, we'll set on 500, okay? Right, right. That's an acceptable, reasonable price. However, initial demand is, like, not nearly enough to meet supply, not even close. Which means that, as we follow the supply-demand curve, there should be a smaller number of people equal to the existing supply that would be willing to pay for a higher cost to get that product. So, those people may be willing to pay more, but Sony can't price it at a higher value because that'll entail an optical hit. So, mm -hmm. if there is an optical hit associated with that market transaction, what scalpers do is they take the benefit of providing these products and price gouging them or not price gouging, sorry, and uh, price gating them to that community. And they do so for whatever, 800, 1,000, whatever. Um, and that's fantastic. And they also take the optical hit. And that's fair. I don't understand why anyone should have a problem with that. That seems like a... Right, like, Jeff, what do you think? Like, doesn't that seem like a natural... Well, look, being a scalper is still being kind of a dick, though. No, that's It's what still I... a dick move. No, that's what I mean. It is... Yeah, sure, it yeah, is. Yeah. Just like it would be a dick move if Sony did it, so they absorb right, the hate, right. you know? Right, and they should be happy with the hate because they're making money from it. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, there are some people who do this gotcha, too, where it's like... Um, right. Um, they'll say, like, uh, oh, well, isn't that the same as buying wholesale from another person and selling at your own store? If that's done in a way no. where you're not providing additional utility to the consumer, then, yeah, in a way that that is... It's not scalping, but, yeah, you are being destructive. You're not contributing meaningfully to the economic process. You're just making more money. You're a middleman. Um, so, a middleman yeah. of a middleman. Right, right. So it's essentially what it is. Again, adding absolutely no utility to it. Uh, and so now, again, they're complaining about it. They're being absolute baby bitches about it. And then they add in that, hey, you know what? You should be nicer to us because sometimes we donate to charity. Well, that's good for them. Good. With, without any sort of evidence that they actually do that. I just, why it's do they not, even care? Scalpers don't, don't use their know. real names, do, do they? I don't uh, know. I don't know. Like, actually like what is this like is this going to nope. come up when you google their like resumes in the future what do they care what are where are they getting this negativity like internet comment forms like wh how is this affecting them in any way i, I know right they're there's they're just incredibly salty because there are numerous articles coming out and saying oh scalp are bad scalp are bad well we're not bad we're donating to charity we just helped we helped grandma cross the street. Wait, hold on. Okay? There's somebody in chat. We may have charged her $25, but, Va you know, we, we helped her cross the street. Hold on. Vosh, um, scalpers do add utility because they ensure that people who may not have been able to get a console to get one. Scalpers don't produce more PS5s. Scalpers, by upping the price, prevent people who may have otherwise been able to get the PS5 at its original price from getting one. You're not making more PS5s. You're just making right. sure that only the wealthy people can get them. That's You're not... I mean, you're you're not increasing the number of people who receive a PS5. You're, you're just profiting off of your ability to ensure that only wealthy people or people who want it more can get it, you know? But that, even that, yeah. it's not necessarily people who want it more, okay? There are tons of people who want a PS5 more than anything else in the world who can't afford to pay a scalper's price. Right. And there are tons of people who are super wealthy and who would be willing to pay a scalper's price, even though they personally don't care that much. Willingness to pay and desire for the item are not necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. And also what they're doing too, and, and, and this should this should be stressed a little bit more, they're using unfair practices in order to do it. They're using, again, bots in back you know, back end information from retailers when you know when they get these PlayStation in, they monitor those, they have their bots go in and and be able to order them faster than anyone else can. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so and in that case, you know, like, yeah. Wait, the person yeah. said again, otherwise it would literally just be up to luck to get a console. Yeah. If a thousand people want 
an X item and there's only a hundred X item, I think it would be preferable for it to be based on luck rather than a botnet immediately scooping up all of the limited edition items and then reselling them back at three times their price. I don't know how that's like, I don't know how that's morally better. I mean, yeah, leave it up to luck. Wouldn't it's that not. be cool? Yeah, well, it, it's already been about luck. I mean, you know, saying like you could go to your local Meyer or Walmart and, and, you know, be in a line with like, you know, six people and there's only five PS5s left. Well, the, but you know, the time that you got there, uh, luck, right? Oh, you, maybe you, you know, hit a stoplight on the way there and it prevented you from being the fifth person in line. Instead, you're a sixth person yeah, in line. You could do that well, logic with anything. Luck. What if every time exactly. you went to the grocery store, every single item had a bidding war going on and the fewer items right. there were, the higher the bidding war trended up. Like sometimes I think it's okay to just be like, well, I didn't get to the store on time to get X rather than like seeing like a an auctioneer like one thousand dollars for the ketchup bottle you know mm -hmm. like i don't know i don't know you can apply that logic in a lot of ways um and and these people are just being just ridiculous middlemen and getting in the way and 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 just making the situation worse because again you're you know you're you're driving up the price for again i know something that is limited in stock um and that's not always going to be the case but you know scarcity and all uh, at this point, but still, you're artificially inflating it more than it should be, uh, and it, it's it, it just seems like it's it's un, incredibly unfair and very dickish, and and, and to expect then an apology for being called out is just even more ridiculous. I just don't. I just I just don't understand why they're upset. I I don't even I know. know. What, people are being mean. What did you think you're scalping? What did you think was going to happen? Do you think people would be like right. happy about it? Of course, there are people who. Wanted a PS5 and wanted to take a shot at being able to get it at 500, but now they're not going to be able to, and they're mad about it. Like, what, what, what do you want? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. One, one more quote here from, mm -hmm. right? Both Reagan and Jordan say that they are ultimately helping people by giving them financial opportunities. So apparently they've hired people. They've created a little business around this, okay? Um, they say that they're helping their employees give financial opportunities to resell consoles at their inflated price. I mainly just try and help others now. That's all that really matters to me. However, they like to justify it to themselves. I wish wow. they. I, I mean, I wish they would just be forthcoming. Like I saw an economic yeah. vacuum that I could make money from, so I did. There you go. I, I'm playing capitalism. Call it super capitalism, if you will. I'm playing capitalism, and it works. So you want to get mad at me? Fine, but. I'm going to sit there and now jump into my money, Scrooge McDuck Scott, uh, style, with both f middle fingers extended. Don't care. I'll do it again. At least be honest. Well, <laughs> what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's that's all the stories that I got uh, for y'all. Yeah, well, we ran, we ran through more than I would normally be able to in any given four-hour stream of mine. I do appreciate you allowing me to take over your show for an hour and 40 minutes. It was my much, pleasure, much man. I uh, appreciate you coming on. I'm sorry that it took so long. That's that's my bad for planning. Not not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, so, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I actually hadn't heard of you until one of my friends brought, it, brought you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so I don't know the lefty YouTube sphere, so that's my problem, okay? I'm like disconnected boomerish sometimes from like what's going on in the online yeah, like, a, like a sigma male <laughs> right uh, and so like i my friends will come to me um uh, you know my bestie tiffany like my audience you know tiffany right um she's kind of awesome and so she's like hey uh check out this wash guy right he makes some pretty solid points i was like all right whatever i'm 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 into i watch other creators and I try to support other creators where I can, right? So, you know, I, I, I go and I you know, go into the surfs on, on you know, on Twitch. And I'll, I'll throw them some, you know, subs. Mm -hmm. And I'll help them out that way. And I'll go and do promotion. And I'll do that for, for other lefty channels. Uh, because I'm, I feel like I'm doing my part to try to create a lefty community, right? Yeah, and absolutely. So, and so, and so Tiffany, she's, she's a small time streamer as well. You know, she, she's just like getting started. And so she, you know, introduced me to, to your content. I was like, Hey, it'd be great to get this guy on and have a conversation and, and talk about some of these different topics and, and dunk on fashion and, and whatever, and pick your brain. Cause that's what I love to do. 
I love to go and, and pick people's brains. I love no. these conversations. My primary limitation is that I am virulently Busy. antisocial. Now th that too, but also antisocial. Um, so my willingness to engage with other people is definitely a, a, a temporal thing, you know? Well, I, you know, I also think that you might've had bad, uh, like, you know, uh, bad experiences with some people as well from what I've seen of your content. Well, <laughs> maybe I, you know, um, just, just a couple come to mind. Maybe possibly, perhaps. I uh, I do appreciate you coming on seriously. Uh, would you mind uh, throwing out your socials to everyone listening? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I I got Twitter at uh, Jeff's Politics. It's where I shit post mainly. I shit post a lot on your account. I shit post on my so so my Twitter account doesn't really reflect what I do here because I'm just constantly shit posting people. That that's what Twitter's for. That's why I have like eight thousand followers. <laughs> but follow me anyway. Um, I'm also on YouTube. Uh, I'm on Twitch, uh, you know, youtube.com slash Waldorf Nation. Uh, that's where I do the show. We're, we're trying to get to 200,000 subs. Uh, we're like 161,000 now. So, so you know, it's a, it's a slow burn. Um, Twitch. What's that? Getting up there. Oh, yeah. yeah well, not like you. You're like a rocket. No. I like, was Jesus. for a little while. Maybe again. We'll see. <laughs> that's good shit, though. Um and, and so uh, on Twitch, you know, twitch.tv uh, slash Jeff underscore Waldorf. Again, I do a lot of shit posting, but I also try to help the lefty channels there. So I, I need more followers and I need more people to follow on Twitch as well so I can raid in, um, do all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, I got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash, uh, what is it, uh, Waldorf Nation, I think. Or Jeff Waldorf Show. Something like that. I don't know. You'll Something find in it. that ballpark. I, I got a, I got a few of them, <laughs> so that's that's basically it. So if you want to follow me for you know some decent lefty content and uh, dunking on you know conservatives, that's uh, you can do that. I, I much appreciate it. Please subscribe. Thank you, Jeff, and I appreciate um, you coming on. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Uh, we should play some uh, Among Us sometime. Yeah, we used to have um, games going on that. I've been trying. I I'll admit, <laughs> Among Us is somewhat fun i've been trying to play phasmophobia lately that's been fun um yeah hey i'm up i'm up for 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 any type of games i'll give it a mind thank you I have can, a wonderful day i can okay? bring some friends too you too man thank you so much appreciate it take care you have a good one all right all right that was cool jeff is cool i'm socialed out though Whew. boy am i weak